If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the interview show. I'm here with Chris Owen. Owens? Owens. Owens, plural. So there's more than one of you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, he is he is the president and CEO of Linksphere, right? That's what it's called. Uh huh. Linksphere. And, and it is a business networking platform, correct? Well, <laughs> well what is Linksphere? Let me ask, let's pose it that way. What is Linksphere, and why do we care? Yeah, because one of the early challenges, and I was trying to explain this to people, you know, it went through ve- many iterations of trying to, like, get the right wording so people didn't say, oh, you mean like LinkedIn? No, 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 not like LinkedIn. That's not what I mean. Yeah, not, and how is it different from LinkedIn? Well, we're not doing social media, number one. Uh, yeah. the, the, the better description of what we're doing is we're in, we're in the CRM space. Okay. And, uh, you know, even saying that's kind of hard to for a lot of people because you say CRM to the average business owner, and they're like, what's that? What? Uh, exactly. So... So when I say CRM, I mean uh, uh, customer relationship management software or contact relationship software. Um, but we're kind of a new niche of it. Um, okay. Essentially, like the best way to describe it would be to say we're taking the successful habits of like power networkers, what they do to manage their networks to really develop relationships, and then we're baking them into a contact software. So essentially. Oh. Instead of contact relationship management, we're doing we're doing contact relationship building, which oh, very is cool. a CRB instead of a CRM. So how does it help the clients build? I'm sorry. So how, I, I, how's, how do people use it to build? Oh, okay. So a lot of times, see, one of the things that you probably noticed this yourself, but mm-hmm. when people go out to networking events, they 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 tend to think that networking means um, let me see if I can find anyone who wants my stuff. Right? Like that's about as, as deep as it goes, right? Who, yeah. They go to a networking event and it's like, all right, who wants my stuff? Well, does this guy want my stuff? No, he doesn't even want my stuff. And that's about how deeply they think. So they can go to multiple networking events, like you can go like 20 networking events, really not develop any deep relationships because they're really just looking for the guy at the event who says, oh, yeah, I need that right now. You know the one sale versus like the the long tail, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like like they're they're thinking kind of on the immediate, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's, you know, I don't blame most people for it. I, most people have never been educated into how networking's really done. Um, I wasn't for a long time, mm-hmm. and um, so you know you can't help them when they when they tend to think of the word networking as just being a euphemism for prospecting. You know? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, but I've done you know when I got into networking. Um, about five years ago, you know, when I joined a BNI chapter for my for my web website design firm, and then I started to like I started to read a lot more about it. Like I went a lot further than most people do. So I started to really study the principles, get different books on the subject, try them, go to events, and see how they worked. And um, and I found like that you know the principles that the best single word that I've ever heard said about um, networking is it's about generosity. That's true. So, the giver, uh, as we in B and I, or I'm formerly a B and I, but the giver's gain. Exactly. Yeah, the giver's gain, or uh, anyone who's a fan of Bob Berg's books, uh, the idea of the go giver instead of the go getter. Or Gary Vaynerchuk and the right was it right, right hook? Wait, no, it's left jab, left jab, left jab, right hook. You know, it's like you give, you give, you give, then you ask. You know, I haven't read that one, but yeah, uh, that sounds all right. Jab, right. <laughs> jab, jab, right hook. I, I'm sorry, Gary, I forget. But, yeah. That's okay. So, so what we do is like, like from the start, 
when a person goes into the software, the first thing they see on the dashboard is it's asking them, what have you done for your contacts lately? It gets them immediately thinking in that particular mindset. Whenever they add a contact into the software, one of the required fields is to determine what kind of connection level you have with the person. And, and what I mean by that is this. Usually people think of their networking contacts kind of two-dimensionally. Okay, he's a contact. Um, you know, like I reached out to him, I met him at an event, and I have his name and address. Fine. Um, but, but it really goes a little bit deeper. So you can have, first you can have no connection with someone. Like if I handed you someone's business card and said, uh, here, you know, call this guy. Well, you have no connection with him yet. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you met someone at a networking event and you spoke to them for 15 minutes and you said, uh, you know, here's what I do and here's what you do and we get a general idea of that, let's say we'd be at the level of awareness. We know each other exists and that's about it. Yeah. But if we were to do the right actions, follow up with the person, um, do things that build trust, we, we you know, built that, that, that relationship, you would get to the level of trust and then as you built it further, you would get to the point of what I call contribution. So that's like the point where you have a contact that's a valuable resource for you and vice versa. They reach out to you, you know you can reach out to them. Now you've got a real strong link in your network. And, and so we get people to think about that. What kind of a connection level do you have with the person? Um, yes. Kind of track that out and get them to look at, you know, we kind of give them a pie chart of all their contacts and see like where are they? And then after they do that, we have, there's like lots of ideas that we give them in the system for what they can do to follow up with their contact. Oh, that's very cool. So like, you know, they could give a testimonial for the person. They could ask a referral. They could make a connection uh, for someone else for them. They could um, cooperate with them in some uh, nonprofit activity. There's yeah. a lot they could do, you know. And um, one of the other things that, that are kind of really crucial to be able to even do that effectively is, like you'll notice when you go into most CRMs, they have the basic fields that are needed, like that are on like a business card. Absolutely, yeah. And either that's all they have, or maybe they provide some functionality for you to like build, you know, your own fields and such. But most small business owners don't know how to do that and aren't inclined to go and try to like figure out, okay, I need a Dropbox for this and I need a this for that. They don't really know. So we do it a little differently. We provide a lot of fields that actually gives them the ideas. Like just by the field being there, it's kind of like, Here's stuff you could learn. You don't. Here's data you don't have about them, like their family information, like, like what are their passions and interests, what are their goals, um, what skills do they have, like things like that. Getting them to think about these things and hopefully fill them in because there, there's an interesting there's an interesting statistic in sales. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but the statistic is 80% of sales are made from the fifth to the twelfth time you contact a person. Mm -hmm. People buy from people they like. Right, right. So so if we have that fifth to twelfth contact window, only twelve percent of people follow up more than three times. That's the that's the funny thing about it. And what I what I ask myself is say like, why don't they follow up? Mm -hmm. so there's two reasons. One is they don't have a system for following up. Like they don't have a something that reminds them regularly to be in touch with a person so that so the contact doesn't fall out of touch with them. You know, they're always contacting the people they just met and forgetting about the people they used to, they, they met, let's mm -hmm. say, right? So one is having a system, but the second is knowing that, knowing how to follow up. You I mean, there's only so many times you can go, hey, Joe, if you need any widgets, I'm your guy. Oh, hey, Joe, we got a sale on widgets this month. Hey, Joe, uh, you know, for all your widget needs, remember us. You know, you can only do that so many times before you just feel a little ridiculous. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you yeah. don't, you are ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. And, and so you and so that's one reason why one might stop following up too. They just don't know what else to say. But a lot of people don't realize that like if they get in the right mindset of networking, follow up can have nothing to do with business and still be incredibly even more beneficial than any of that other stuff. Like, you know, you could find out I, I use the example like I could find out that your daughter's trying to get into Drexel and maybe I know the dean of admissions, you know, there. And I could get put a good word in over there. You know what I mean? If I could do that would be an, an immensely more useful follow-up than anything else I could say about my product. It doesn't even matter about my product. No, but people will buy from people that they like, you know? It's exactly. the first game. Exactly. You know, it's kind of like building that social capital. So um, a lot of people just don't realize that. They don't think with that type of mindset. 
And so my goal with Linksphere is to build, it's a software that has, that kind of gets you into that mindset, gets you into the right habit framework of networking. Mm-hmm. Just makes you a better networker so you're more successful. Absolutely. Um, so so what's the pricing structure for Linksphere? Like how do people get started? Is there a freemium model? Is it, is it you know, you know, premium, you know, plus premium and ultimate or gold or platinum? Um, well, right now it's pretty simple. Um, when a person first signs up, they have a free level account, okay, a freemium account. And the only restriction on it is that you can only have up to 250 contacts on it. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, right? Um, so they can, they can stick with that and they can keep using that. And then if they need more contacts, we give them actually two options. Uh, either they can upgrade to a premium account, which would be twenty dollars a month or two hundred a year, which gives them like two free months if they do that. Um, or um, we actually give them um, their own unique link for you know we call it the, a spread the word link, so they can uh, pay, pay, it, pay it forward. Yes, yeah, so to speak, if they give that link to someone else and that person ends up signing up for a free account, then they get another two hundred fifty contacts added to their limit. So uh. it's like a Dropbox model in that regard. So before you know it, you're like, holy crap, I have a lot of contacts in here. Exactly. And so use your network, Linksphere, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um and I think it's really advantageous to share with other people because if other people are better at networking, they're gonna be a better contact for you anyway. Mm-hmm. Um the other thing that we're something we're working on right now should be done uh, pretty soon. Um it's kind of we're working on the, the team level uh of, of Linksphere. So like you know, like most CRMs have a, a, a situation, so like if a company wants their sales guys to use the software, right, they usually have it so you, um, they, they buy an account, and that account is allowed a certain number of users, and then, okay, so then let's say they got six salespeople, and then, okay, all the six salespeople are in there, fine. But the problem is, is that job turnover is so high these days, right? So chances are, if I'm one of your salespeople, and it, even if I'm a real good networker and I put all my data into the system, if I'm doing it the traditional model, I lose my job, I lose my contacts, all my data, in other words. Yes. And so it's kind of, it's very disadvantageous to proper networking the way these systems work. So I came up with a different model for this. The idea is this. If you're, you're a business owner, you've got the six salespeople, rather than you buying six accounts for them that you own, we have it like you can buy six subscriptions, okay? I would set up my own account in Linksphere, and we could connect our accounts. So you're essentially paying for my account while I'm working for you, right? And you when would have you leave, you get your book of business with you. Exactly. Like I can disconnect my account at any time, and then you'll be able to like you know access analytics. We're working out some of the details on that, but the gist is basically that I own my network. I might be able to yes. share. But I don't have to lose my network, and I can take it with me. And all of a sudden, your network becomes an asset that you can take with you wherever you go. And more inclined to spend time investing and building those relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. That's very cool. And then, um, so what about the portability? Portability. Um, right now, um, there's a degree of responsiveness to the site. Um, to be honest, uh, we've made it. Like we worked on the responsiveness, then we made a bunch of changes, and then we have to. Go but the thing that um, we're working right now, we're really in need of a mobile app, so we don't have that yet. That's one of the main reasons why we're kind of. Okay. Well, what I, mean, what I meant is, what about people getting their data out? Is it exportable? Oh, so getting data out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you can um, you can both uh, getting data in and getting data out. You can do uh, via CSV file. Okay. You can also easily both import and export your contacts through Mailchimp or Constant Contact. It's not AWeber yet. No, haven't done AWeber yet. Um, only because, and, and, and I, but I've had. That's why I say that there are sponsors. So I gotta thank AWeber for being our sponsor. So. No, I, I, I understand, and and AWeber is on my radar. I just mm-hmm. have to run into the people. I just kind of have to prioritize what we're working on and, and what time. And I haven't had anyone complain that we haven't had AWeber yet, so it hasn't moved to the top of the list. But I do have the intention of plugging into that as well. Mm-hmm. Um. Another thing that we do that's a little different as far as the import side is with LinkedIn. So, okay. um, very cool. 
in, in the past, where, when people have worked out, like when, when CRM type systems have worked out importing from LinkedIn, what they've yes. done is they've just pulled those contacts right in and dumped them into your contacts. I, I didn't really believe in doing that for a couple of reasons. One is when you directly link to LinkedIn via like an, uh, a programming interface like that, LinkedIn actually doesn't give you the email address or the phone number of the person. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't want to spam up their contacts with a bunch of things that didn't have the contact info and that they didn't know which ones had the info entered or not yet. The second thing, and even more important, is that, quite frankly, most people have a ton of contacts in their LinkedIn connections that they don't really have much invested in. They, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they opened their LinkedIn account and they wanted the number to increase. It didn't look like a total dweeb, you know. So yeah, everyone who accepted, put out their LinkedIn requests and everyone accepted and, you know, it kind of went in there and you know, increased the number. But when they go through it right now, they don't really want to pull all those contacts in. So what we do is we pull it into a LinkedIn queue for them and they can selectively select the ones they want to add into their contacts. Oh, that's right. It's very handy. I like that. Yeah. And so I'm looking at your website right now. You see you also have an online business card. What's that do? Oh. Okay, something we set up recently is um, the idea with the online business card is basically a web uh, a web page that any user they can actually create can create more than one. So if you had like a couple businesses, you can make a couple different cards if you want. Um, it, it brings you to a page. I don't know if you, if you go to the like if you follow the links on there, um, it should give you a link to an example business card. So you yes. Can, but the so the gist is. Um, like a mobile phone image on there. It nice. has all their contact info. It has, um, they can even add videos to the business card and attachments. So if they had promotional data or whatever they want to add to their business card, they could do that. And then there's also a field at the top where they can, e someone, if they go there, they can easily, like if I saw your business card, I could put in my email address, hit send, and it'll send me a, a V card of your, That's very handy. your info. Yeah. Yeah. Now is, there, is now, is there an email collection on that that they, they'll go into MailChimp? Off of the business cards? Yeah. No, we're not We're not using it to harvest uh, email addresses at all. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, no, not, not at all. It's just purely so people can actually get the business card of the person they're, they're uh, trying to get the info for. Awesome. So, so, Chris, where can people get to Linksphere? How do you spell Linksphere and how do they find it? It's uh, L-I-N-C-S-P-H-E-R-E. Dot com. Okay, and um, where can they find out? I guess that's where they can find more information. Where can they find you online? Um, I mean, they can use the contact form on there. They can anyone is is free to uh, contact me, Chris at linksphere dot com. I, I, I'm open to communication, and awesome. uh, they can also find me on LinkedIn. I know when you get connected on LinkedIn, I was like, oh, okay, there. So I was looking at Linksphere as we were talking. I'm like. L A N C K L A N K. I'm like, oh, wait, oh, L A N C. There you go. Yeah, I, well, when I two point oh point way of doing things. When I originally looked at the name, I was I first went for the K, of course. Of course. Uh, but uh, there were so many things associated with that name already that it would have been both confusing and hard to uh, copyright. Uh, Absolutely. Trademark. So um, L A N C, I think, is a little bit more memorable as well. So it is. Once you remember, oh, it's L A N C. Very cool. Well, Chris, thanks for being on the show.